Sodium permanganate is the inorganic compound with the formula NaMnO4. It's closely related to the more commonly encountered potassium permanganate, but it's less desirable because it's more expensive to produce. It's mainly available as a monohydrate and it absorbs water from the atmosphere. It has a low melting point, being about 15 times more soluble than potassium permanganate, sodium permanganate finds some applications where very high concentrations of MnO4 are sought. The first step to getting this is taking apart a battery. I'm using a 6 volt battery because they have 4 dry cells which are pretty big. Why I say dry cells is because the battery is made of a zinc set shell filled with manganese dioxide and a rod of graphite in the center. There are also electrolytes in there and a cardboard separator to separate the zinc and the manganese dioxide, but I don't really care about those things. It's a dry cell because the early batteries were made with liquids, and they still are because acid lead batteries are still used today, but they're mostly found in cars, and the problem with these batteries is they could spill and make a mess, also rendering the battery useless. So they created dry cells, which don't make a mess. Early batteries were of great value for experimental purposes, and in practice, their voltages fluctuated. They couldn't provide large current for a sustained period, and the Daniel cell, invented in 1836 by British chemist John Frederick Daniel, was the first practical source of electricity. Becoming an industry standard and seeking widespread adoption as a power source for elect the electrical telegraph networks, it consisted of a copper pot filled with copper sulfate solution in which was submerged, submerged in an unglazed earthenware container filled with sulfuric acid and a zinc electrode. With that out of the way, now what I do is I take a random cell and I pretend that I didn't already open it. What I'll be using to take it apart is tin snips and I just try to cut it up to scrape out all of the manganese dioxide. So now for the fun part, which isn't actually really that fun. I need to take it all out, take all the manganese dioxide out of the battery insides and put it all into a beaker. This is going to take a long time and it's honestly kind of inefficient because it makes a huge mess but once this is done I can actually get to cleaning it out with water this step isn't necessary and honestly it's kind of redundant because it just you really don't need to do this but if you want to I just mortar and pestle it I grind it up in my mortar and pestle and the manganese dioxide should come out as a powder again this step really is just redundant because I'm going to be washing it out with water in the next step. This step I really don't know why I did either, but I'm measuring out all of my manganese dioxide. I guess I didn't know that I was going to be washing out with water and thought that this was just going to be my final product until I made the sodium permanganate. But I measured out all of my manganese dioxide and it's about 57 grams. I mentioned before that this type of battery contains electrolytes in it, so I'm just going to do a quick washing of it with water, and I just add in a random amount. I pour it into some filter paper, and after around 100 years, it all passed through. This is good, but it's still really wet, so I just need to heat it up on my hot plate to drive out all of the water. Now that I have my manganese dioxide, it's on to the actual reaction. I measure out everything that I have, and it turns out that I have 36 grams of the manganese dioxide. But I don't really care about this, because I'm just going to use all of the bleach I have. So according to the amount of bleach I have, I'll use 29 grams of manganese dioxide and 13 grams of sodium hydroxide. So I add in the sodium hydroxide to the manganese dioxide and measure out all of the bleach. I'm using 7.5% and 500 mils of it, which should equal around 37.5 grams of sodium hypochlorite. So I measure it all out in graduated cylinders because I just got new ones and I'm really happy that I have them, and I add it all into a beaker. I could have just added it all into the beaker at once and still gotten a like almost exact amount of bleach I needed, but I still just wanted to use my graduated cylinders. Now what I do is I add all of everything else, all of the solid stuff, into the bleach, and this is when I realized I messed up. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine, when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. It's not turning into the characteristic purple color, and it still smells like bleach, so I don't know. 
The procedure I'm following is from a random Wikipedia article, and I don't even know if it's right.